This is Noel Tate, one half of the Velvet Drapes from Trapped in a World, the Howard the Duck podcast, and you're listening to Capes and Lunatics. Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.D. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. The recording has started. In a world of capes and lunatics, gods and monsters, there are those who seek to cause trouble. Trouble no one hero can defend against. Trouble for which a new team must arise. That team is the Avengers. And this is Avengers Declassified. I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser. And with me, as always, is the Blue-Eyed Bomber, from the bird, which is called It's Phil Podcast Parrot. Welcome, Philip. I am so glad you are here. As <laughs> always, tonight on Avengers Declassified, we are talking um, five... Uh, 450. Captain America. 450 through 453. 450 to 453. Honestly, these numbers get confusing to me at a certain point. 450, though has what I have to say is one of the oddest scenes. And honestly, I have to say, now, I, I don't want to be judgmental. Uh, who does the artwork on this on these books, Philip? Uh, here, let me... Is it Ron Garney? Let me uh, pull up the thing here. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Ron Garney for most of this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but leave because it's Mark Wade writing. Let me see. Here we go. Yeah, Mark Wade writer, Ron Garney, penciler. Yeah. So here's my question. I mean, was this was this an editorial decision at the top of Marvel of the nineties, which is said, that said this is what we're doing, what? and everyone needs to draw in the Rob Liefeld style, or is it that no, they just hired a bunch of artists who said yes, I too draw on the Rob Liefeld style. I don't know if it was a mandate, but I know that that style was popular in the 90s, so may, some certain artists may have been trying to ape that style just because it was popular at the time. I mean, just, just the hair alone. <laughs> honestly, it's like, honestly, again, this is like where you have that moment where like the the drawn hair of these characters has more life than the TV version of Medusa. It's just, you know, I, I kind of feel like at times Sharon Carter's hair is going to just attack. Hey, man, 90s, there was some big hair in the 90s. Look at Peg Bundy. Come on. Well, no, you know, though ironically, Peg Bundy's hair is meant to be a throwback. Yes. To the 60s. It's like, it's this thing that it's just this weird choice to have these gigantic. And again, I understand it's that Farrah hair, as we used to have in the 70s, coming back, but like uh, with with sort of almost a malevolent vengeance. I wonder if it was just they went overboard, but they wanted to do something different than how she a- appeared originally, which was just like the straight hair and stuff. Yeah, that was that was a mystique, is what we would call that in the in the business parlance. I mean... And that's the thing. And, and I get the idea of wanting to have a distinctive look for your character, but it it is literally like the 70s, like the 80s. You know, like the every time you have a distinctive look, it never ages well. And when you have a look like the 60s, which is Sharon Carter, which is normal human hair, that actually ages just fine. So you're going to have the the modern day Sharon Carter yeah. with her normal human hair and it actually looks normal. I mean, yeah, we get back to that eventually. Yeah, you know, but I mean, like even in the TV shows. Mm. Oh yeah, you know, it's like having Sharon Carter have normal human hair 
is allowable. You know, what, what, and that's also what's also, because this is also, I want to, is this like, like I'm trying to remember like when Black Widow had the cropped hair. What, the short hair? In the 90s, yeah. Yeah, so this is the same era. Yeah. And see, when when Black Widow had the short hair, everyone else had the long hair, it made sense for Black Widow. Yeah. Because she's being more of an on-the-ground spy. It made sense for her to have the longer hair when she was still the femme fatale spy. Now, Sharon Carter, who is an on-the-ground spy, has the big hair. Yeah, I mean, short hair made sense for Black Widow because it's like as a spy, you know, you could be putting on wigs and stuff. And, yeah. No, on every level. On every level. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's, it's poorly thought out is all I'm going to say. Oh, you're, anyway. You were talking so, You were talking about hairstyles. I thought you were going to talk about uh, Bill Clinton's hairstyle. Well, I mean, look, they drew Bill Clinton just fine, you know, and this is. You know, I'm trying to remember, you know, there there are some people who were very angry at, Bill, uh, at the existence of Bill Clinton. Some people who are very not angry at the existence of Bill Clinton. I don't know. Um, but everyone drew them. And to be fair, I can't tell them this because Bill Clinton seems like an idiot in this. And to that extent, it's, it's a... Um, uh, a fair enough idea. Why? Because the, in the first issue, yeah, he has... Uh agents bring in captain america because oh well <laughs> the plans for this argus cannon got out and you and i are like the only ones who knew this so i know i didn't leak it so it must have been you and it's just like really well not for nothing are we to be implied in that suggestion that uh bill clinton like just knows how to build an argus cannon in his head like that he didn't write it down after cap gave it to him you know i mean really yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, no. And again, it's like, I mean, I guess for purposes of the story, but it's like, yeah, neither Steve nor Bill Clinton, I don't think, had the uh, wherewithal, even if they wanted to, to be like, oh, yeah, here's how you build an Argus cannon. And two, we live in a, you know, the Marvel Universe. It's a world of telepaths. You're telling me someone couldn't have just snatch that info out of either one of their heads. Or even just the original guy. Exactly. Well, I thought they said, I mean, did they say he died or something? Or, um, well, he died, but like, you know, yeah. two minutes beforehand, you know, uh, uh, you know, Steve Xavier, the janitor, could have like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You know. I, I mean, how many telepaths floating around? It's like, really? Exactly. And it's just, it's, it's a little bit, and, and again, to that extent, that is literally what we get as a reveal later. But in this moment, it is just this idea that Bill Clinton's going to make this weird, random ass- assumption. And then again, no trial. Well, he says, I, I can't put Captain America on trial. He's like, it's going to be devastating to everyone in this country. So, yeah, I'm just going to ship you all abroad. You're not allowed in the United States well, no, anymore. No, 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 no. He doesn't just do that, Phil. Well, he takes away he his citizenship. leave the country and don't come back. He says, you are revoked of your citizenship. Oh, yeah. Which... I'm sorry. In the real world, a president can't just revoke your citizenship unilaterally. You know? Yeah, yeah well, I thought every t- president had to show their taxes, too, Charlie. Yes, sir. Mm, fair enough. Um, honestly, it's just... I, and I guess you can make the argument that, well, just Cap being a good soldier, he's just going to do what he's told. You know, even though he doesn't like it, he's going to accept the... The, the the decision made. Well, I mean, well, even back in you know, those U.S. agent stories we did when John Walker took over as Captain America, so even back then, Steve was like, you know, I really don't want to go to war with my own government. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, this is... Well, this, you see, well, you see what he did. literally a legal battle. Yeah, well, well, what he did, you know, once he gets, you know, they ship him to England, and he said, you know, he's like, you know what, I got to, first thing he wants to do, he's like, I got to go prove my innocence, you know. Yeah, but first of all, proving any negative is a lot. Yeah. Well, and, it's Captain America. And, and, well, yeah, I know it's Captain America. And to be fair, he does have to deal with the existence of the Argus cannon as a thing. Um, but at the same time, it's just... It just I know, and it's, and it's, it's like... A, it's a delightful conceit. I know. helps the story. 
And it is just, it is just. And it's like, do we, it's like, do we trust the president? I mean, Nixon was head of the secret empire, so it's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I, well, and to be fair, and not for nothing, Cap knows this. Yes, yes. You know, he's like, oh yeah, no, no, you're totally corrupted. You know, I mean, that's sort of the thing. It's like, you know, when you've actually already had to deal with the president being your enemy. Although with sliding time at this point, is that still a president? I mean, it can't be Nixon with sliding time, or is it just like a high-ranking official in a... Well, I mean, I, not for nothing, it is the president at the time. <laughs> you know, which is why, you know, thank goodness for Trump, because, <laughs> you know, otherwise sliding time would have said Obama was the head of the Secret Empire. Oh, oh, yeah. I but, you know, we dodged that because that was only eight years. And now it, then Trump is like, oh, obviously, obviously that's who the head of the Secret Empire was. That makes perfect sense now. You know, and, you know, you can go Reagan, George W. Bush, et cetera, you know. There's people you can put into the sledding time scale now yeah. that make as much sense as uh, Nixon. And honestly, Trump is like the best one for that. So, oh, mate, do, you to talk politics, I was going to say, do you ever see that meme on uh, Twitter? They're like, hey, remember when Lex Luthor became president in like uh, around the year 2000? It's like, and he divested himself of all his business holdings when he became president. They were like, Lex Luthor was a more honest president than Trump. Yeah, well, and again, because he's fictional. Well, true. I mean, that's the thing. Is like when things are fictional, they're very easy. Yes. To make either good or bad. This is. But even Lex Luthor <laughs> followed yeah, the but, rules. You know, that's that's lawyer that's lawyer ganda versus prop copaganda. Yeah. You know, it's like you can if you control the narrative, you can tell the story however you want. True. But that's a whole other episode for yeah another show another time. Let's talk about what we're talking yes, about. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. So, yeah. If, if, I mean, the first issue ends, yeah, they dump him in England, and then Sharon catches up to him. Yeah. And, and again, it's just, uh, I mean, great that she got all that hair up in that little mask. Um, you know, it's like when they when they draw Riri with the big hair, and then they, it just... It, it's, down the map. it's comic book physics. I mean, it's like I those know. old stories where bat, there's a Batman pulls off a mask and he's got the Batman mask underneath that mask with the big ears and everything. Yeah. Or, yeah. I mean, in any number of ways. Or just they take off the mask and their hair's perfect. <laughs> you know? <it's, laughs> or they're wearing three masks. Yeah. Yeah. I, although, to be, to, be, to be fair, that's one thing I did appreciate about the most recent episode of She Hulk. <laughs> Was that when the porcupine takes off his mask? I know. There's, there's some funk involved. We were sitting. Uh-huh. We were sitting there last night. I'm like, oh my god, they did porcupine. <laughs> yes. Anyway, but moving right along. Yes. Um. Yeah. So you get Sharon, and it's like no cabs, and it's like um, probably would have been better if you just said, "Hey, Cap, it's me, Sharon. Remember? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm... From our sex last night. It's oh. like, oh yes, I recall now. Yes, hello, Sharon. Yeah, you don't have any money. How are you going to hail a cab? She says she's... Like, oh, that's a good point. I should have thought of that with my super soldier brain. Oh, yeah, she was trailing him, she said, since the agents picked him up. I'm like, okay, I'm, I get it. Maybe she didn't want to be seen in America. But once he's in uh, the UK, I'm like, why wouldn't you just walk up? Like, hey, let's go. Well, and not for, it's not like she wears a mask all the time. Like I said, not for... Who wrote this? Mark Wade. Okay, so I don't want to be mean to Mark Wade. Yeah. But I will say, I feel like a little more effort could have been put into some of the scenarios. I wonder if there was some anger involved in this just because Heroes Reborn is coming. And again, eventually after that year of Heroes Reborn, they do put him back on the new cap book. But Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and maybe that's it. Maybe he's just mad about what he has to deal with. And, and it does seem, I mean... So much of this, I mean, and also you have that reality of the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, well, just, just whole, whole, uh, Sharon's being cut loose by S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, there's a part of me that thinks I didn't, like, I, I, I remember a lot of this, but I also imagine that maybe I wasn't reading them very closely. Because it's like, I think they redo a lot of this in later books. 
I mean, I maybe maybe after Heroes Reborn, he might go into this further. But yeah, I can't remember if he ever went into detail like why she got cut loose. I mean, it may, unless it's just you know there was some kind of big political snafu, and they're like, oh well, well she's the scapegoat. Well, I mean, I guess, and although to be fair, I mean that is one of these weird things is that Shield was falling apart several times at this point in history. Yeah, because I I want to say this is about the time. That you have um, Nick Fury versus Shield, which I think is the first time you have Nick Fury have to bring down Shield because there's a corruptive force within. In that case, LMDs, um, and then a few more times over the next couple of years because people have realized, oh, that's a great way to reset all the pieces on the board. Just have Shield be corrupted from within. Problem solved. That's a, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, this might be a time Fury's not in charge. That are just like, yep. Throw Sharon Carter to the wolves, yeah. Anyway, so, um, or maybe it's in Fury LMD that doesn't know it's an LMD in charge. Because that happens from time to time, too. Thank you, Max Fury. Um, moving right along. Um, so, yeah, so, yeah, the next issue, yeah, they show they got a hotel room. Sharon gets him a new costume without stars and stripes on it. Gets him one of those fancy, what, photon shields or whatever. Yeah, photon shield. You know, as you do. From the local corner store. They, they have them, you know. Got their little uh, vibranium batteries or whatever you had at the time. Um, I mean, easier to conceal, man. Just turn it off. <laughs> yeah, turn it on, turn it off. Do what you need to do. Um, and then where does the adventure go? Um, well, well, I think we get the whole thing with... Uh, we start explaining the machine smith stuff. And, you know, Sharon's like, oh, yeah, remember, you know, remember last week when... Uh, the skull, the skull uh, helped cure Captain America, and she was like, "Oh yeah, by the way, Machine Smith was there, and uh, the skull really didn't tell me what he was doing, but you know, he, he seemed to freak out when he was doing something to you." So, yeah, and and that is, and that's a plot that comes back later because she can jump into any electronic device, but what is the brain but an electronic device? Ha <laughs> ha! Ignore the fact that it actually works in a completely different system than a binary. Uh, electronic circuit. Well, as, I, I mean, at least as they showed, it's not e- it's not as easy for him to jump. You know, he no, he gets messed up yeah. when he tries to jump. You know, because he's like starts stuttering and seems to cause Machine Smith pain. Yeah, he does seem to be in a lot of pain in this. Um, but we do get this idea that <clears throat> so in the in the uh, system, <coughs> the Moldavians, not Moldavians, because that's a real country. This is the Moldavians. Two countries over, right next to uh, Sokovia and Latveria. I love how close together all these countries are. And I also love how they don't just, like, pick one country. They do have several countries to pick from. So I always go after Madripoor, and then they have uh, another couple places out in the uh, Middle East to Southeast Asia area, too, that you can pick. So there's a lot out there. And they're like Gotham City. Every single possible ecosystem is within driving range. You know, Gotham Lake, Gotham Ocean, Gotham Desert, Gotham Mountains. Um, so, yeah, I mean, basically, uh, Cap and Sharon try to sneak into Moldavia. They go to that, what, that uh, military base, the old plane. Get shut down. Mm-hmm. And this is and this is one of the things that like like they were very big into the cliffhanger ending in this. Oh yeah, which is not. It seems. I mean, I guess it's cool, but it's also just like you know when you have the hero of the story get blown up. I don't know if that's as much a cliffhanger as especially when you know. And then tune in for Captain America issue two next week. I mean, it, it just seemed very action movie to me. This whole yeah. this whole arc, and and that is fine in its own right, you know. Uh, it is what it is. What it is is what I will say. Yeah, but no, I always remember that scene in the the beginning of the third when you know Sharon wakes up, she's falling, her chute hasn't opened, and you know Steve's just like coming at her because he he let go of his chute to you know get to her injector seat to open her chute. Yeah, which I think is actually a real physics issue, but. We can deal with that later. He he was streamlined. That chair was flipping and flopping. I mean, uh. I mean, I su- I mean, I suppose. But you also have to remember that his chute had it already open. Yeah. Uh, so that that lost him some time. So and then he has to recognize that her chute didn't open. 
So, although I guess maybe as his chute is opening, he sees her chute isn't opening, and he ejects his uh, straps at that time to fall down and do the whole thing, and yada, yada, yada applies. Um, anyway, he does free Sharon, and they get honestly, in the- <laughs> yeah. No, I was just going to say, they get in the Moldavia, and... They get into Moldavia, and that's, like, again, one of these weird things where it's winter in Moldavia, but it doesn't seem, once they get out of the area, that it is winter anymore, and it almost seems like, you know, late fall. It doesn't seem like winter when he goes over to Latveria later, either, you know? It's just, maybe it's because it's in the mountains? I don't know. It just, it seems... I mean, there's areas of this country where it snows and other places where you, they hardly ever get snow, Charlie Esser, so. Well, but this is a I know. much larger country than, you know, it's like, like most European countries are about the size of the Pacific Northwest or the Eastern Northwest or the U.S. South, you know, well, I mean, the Southeast or the South. Oh, oh, you said Latveria, maybe Doom has weather control. Well, I mean, that could be it, too. I'm just saying it just seems a little inconsistent. Even the snow has to ask permission from I Victor mean, Von too. Well, that, I mean, but that's, but, you know, and then you get over into the Quape uh, storyline, um, or, or whatever, like, the, the 454, which I read, which I know wasn't on the list, but I thought it gives a good end cap to everything. Um, you know, it just seems like, you know, none of the weather seems consistent. Except as it needs to be. But in this moment, they're like, you know, um, you know, of course, you know, I think we can both agree that if we share body heat, it's going to be more practical. And they're like, yep, I agree. And then they sleep separately because they're not going to, she's not falling for that old trick. It's like, I'll just have hypothermia. Thank you very much. Um, and then, of course, Cap sneaks out while the people attack and then. Sharon has to fight the attackers, which is also like, like I would, I don't know why he left her there. Well, he snuck out when he realized the attackers were coming, but he did. Well, he snuck out to get a jeep. I don't know if he and I honestly knew they were coming, but why wouldn't you wake her up and be like, you know, stay on alert? I'm going to go get a jeep. Well, yeah, I mean, well, but the idea is he would know there was a jeep available because he knew they were there. I mean, that's, I guess, the argument. Like, he heard them step on that twig, that one twig that you break, and that's how the other guy knows you're there. And they extrapolate everything based on that one sound of the twig and where it was when it snapped, and then yada, yada, yada occurs. So, um, but he uh, does uh, does get out. We do find out that the machine smith is behind it all after they try to break through the... um, Break, break through the Mold, Moldavian uh, Gulag Gate, or uh, I guess uh, U.S. base, and there's the whole back and forth about how U.S. soldiers don't kill people for no reason. I know it, this is why there are parts of this series that people cringe at. Um, well, did he even know. say U.S. soldiers, or he was just like, "Yeah, no killing. We're not going to kill." Well, he's just... I know. thought that was more his code just than just, oh, U.S. soldiers don't kill. Well, well, she says, I know American soldiers don't kill. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's what she says to sort of... Well, I t- yeah, I thought I took that as kind of, you know, just kind of uh, sarcasm. Be like, oh, yeah, uh, American soldiers don't kill. Yeah, but they do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why she said it sarcastically. And, uh, um, you know, and this is the thing. It's like... You know, and but what really I think Cap should say is, of course, no, we kill, but not unnecessarily. That's it, is that we shouldn't kill unnecessarily. Yeah. And we didn't have to kill these people. There might have been another way. Although I guess Sharon's point is there isn't another way. We have to get to where we're going. You know, we don't have time to figure out, you know, how does Steven Universe this. We need to just get where we're going. And uh, that will involve killing a few people. Fair enough. The villains do the same. And so long as we're no worse than the villains, we can still be heroes. Um, they do meet up with Machine Man. Machine Man has a coin, Phil. Machine Smith, yes. Machine Smith. I'm sorry, Machine Man. That's actually a different character. Yes. 
Oh yeah, he has a cool one. Yes, he he was able to uh, extract ever all the information out of Captain America's brain. The Argus Cannon. What else did he say? Hawkeye's shoe size. Uh... You know, but to me, this is a really interesting idea. Just the idea that within um, that somewhere out there is a coin with all of Captain America's mm. mind and memories at that time that you could theoretically upload into a clone body at some point, mm. and he would still be that nineties. Mark Wade Cap. It would just wake up. He's like, what is going on? Last thing I remember was dying of this disease. Oh, yeah. And, you know, but all of his memories would be the same. He would feel like he was exactly that Cap from the moment that he died. Um, and honestly, that seems like a wasted story potential that no one, that someone should explore. You know? I know, yeah, because 90s Cap, I mean, it was before he even went in the Heroes Reborn. It's before yeah, Hydra Cap. It's before all that, yeah. Someone should bring that. Character <gasps> back. Oh, could you? Could they do a story like that? I mean, I'm trying to remember, think how the sliding time would work. But like, I mean, that, if you did like a somewhat closer to real time, that would be before 9/11 too. I mean, okay, I'm, I'm. So they're not here, so I, I'm just going to talk about it. But let's let's be honest here. They were talking about how they, um, in our current Captain America story, they reviewed every Captain. Oh America yeah, every Captain. You know, like. Jackson and Lansing, yeah. Wouldn't it be interesting if the maybe the revolution is nineties cap in a clone body or something <laughs> like that? Because we've you know they did that same thing with with Red Skull. The Red Skull came back, but it wasn't the our Red Skull, quote unquote. It was the Red Skull made from an earlier memory tape. And once you have that memory tape, you can come back, but then you only have the knowledge. Of that last person. Oh, yeah. I mean, imagine Steve Rogers gets brain damage. The only thing they get, they can do is, like, jack in that old, outdated info. But, again, it's, it's like, oh, hey, why Sam Wilson running around in a Captain America suit? <gasps> Wait, Bucky's alive? What? <laughs> yeah. I mean, anything like that. Yeah. I mean, you know. But All like that. I said, it's just that Yeah, I would rather not to see Captain America brain damage and then yeah, no, no, no. his brain Tony Stark style. But I'm just saying that's a coin that exists. Yeah. That if any writer ever wanted to bring it back, could say, "Oh yeah, no, that's the that's the brain of Captain America." I'm just saying, and but no, that, that that's a good Captain America body. We can make a new Captain America to solve all our problems. Well, like I said, even if that's a what if story, I mean, that's a good idea. It's like if you have to reboot his his mind or whatever, and you only have that outdated knowledge, it's like he doesn't remember Civil War, and get, you know, against Tony Stark. He doesn't, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff. No, there's a lot of great potential in it. I'm not arguing that. I, I'm actually saying that's a great story, too. Yeah. So, anyway, so, uh, yada, yada, yada. So, well, the well, whole plan is Machine Smith has taken over a bunch of uh, guards and people around the president because the president is meeting with the Moldavian Prime Minister. Well, I guess he had a robot body or something it's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's both Machine Smith with a with a peer, <laughs> basically. Well, yeah, and I like yeah. And you gotta love the man that he's at least consistent in his look. He tries to be. He tries to give at least enough clues so you know that's actually a Machine Smith. Uh-huh. But I mean, he's basically like hijacked a helicarrier. He's basically like, oh, you know, eventually oh, yeah. I'm gonna get the nuclear warhead. So like. While Sharon's on the computer, Steve breaks out of the bunker. And where does he go to get him? Who does he go to to get him back to the United States quickly, Charlie uh, Esser? That dropout Victor Von Doom. You know, to be fair, Steve's a dropout, too. So they, they can bond over that, you know. Um, I would say I assume Steve's a dropout. I don't think he ever graduated. I, I mean, I'm, he, probably got his, he probably got a GED or something from uh, the Army, something. Yeah, yeah well, you know, he might have got interest in pointing out he might have got, yeah, you know. Um, we, we shouldn't assume, but just because he's a poor kid doesn't mean he couldn't have gone to high school. Although, actually, Tristan, at that point in history, public education was not as robust as it is today, nor was it as required. But as Phil pointed out, he could have gotten his GED when he went to the Army. Was the GED a thing in 1940? I don't know. Oh, that's a po- that's a good point. But yeah, I mean, I mean, even back then, I know in the Depression it was, but even in like in the early 40s, late 30s, early 40s, weren't you know if, if the family needed money, they just shipped the kids off to get jobs, right? Well, exactly. And at that point in in in, in Steve's history, he had no family. 
Yeah, but I was, even before that, like he, it was just him and his mother for a while after the yeah, father died. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, he might have just gotten his 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 knowledge from good old uh, good old Andrew Carnegie in the Carnegie Library System. Exactly. You know, I mean, that's the thing. Is that you know, these guys built libraries, so kids would go to the library and would read the books. So mm-hmm. Maybe Cap was a guy who read a lot of books. Anyway, I love Doof. I love when Doof just like no, no need to report back. I'll know you failed when the sky's full of nuclear bombs. Yeah, yeah. petty. Yeah, good old Doof. Petty. I mean, you know, but I do like that he uh, packs in the replica copy and the replica shield. Yes. Which, and as as Cap makes a point, it's like you know, I get what he was saying about you know everything you're going to need, including the replicas. But it's like, but you really have to understand they're not as good as the original. Oh yeah, he's saying that as he's like smat as he's like beating on uh, robots, and you see that fake shield like coming apart and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Uh, what are you gonna do, Phil? What are you gonna do? Um. <laughs> but yes, the, then Machine Smith tries to jump in the bill. You know, take knowledge from Bill Clinton's mind. He's like, oh my god, this must be what happened to Steve Rogers. Duh. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, although one thing I do got to say about all of that is just the idea that, um, you know, uh, just fascinating that Dr. Doom has a Captain America suit and shield just ready to go. Just in case. I mean, he has Doom bots. You don't think Doom had like a 3D printer back in the 90s? I mean, I guess so. But even still, that's a lot to 3D print. I'm just saying, it's a lot to 3D print. It's a lot of. I mean, unless he had the the equipment on the plane and they was he was they were doing he was you know it was being made on the plane while Steve's flying over. I don't know. I guess that's a possibility, but it doesn't seem like it takes very long for him to fly over. Because not for nothing, that's sort of that. This is that you know ultrasonic flight stuff. It's yeah. like you know it seems like it's all going very quickly because uh, the 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 telecarrier is about to crash into Mount Hood. The Moldavian into it's all happening while they're over in Moldavia. It it seems a lot. It seems a lot of a lot, Phil. That's all I'm saying. I know. I they're know. not even fighting cross down traffic from, uh, you know, Washington Airport. And is even to, but as Steve even pointed out, that that costume and shield weren't that good anyway. So <laughs> fair enough. So anyway, they um, they fight, and of course, Machine Smith jumps into the. Nuclear football, mm-hmm. as you do, tries to launch all the missiles, but then they destroy the nuclear football, and the world does not end horribly. Yay! Yay! Um, and we get the apology from Clinton at the end. Get the apology. I assume whatever thing he wrote to say Captain America ain't no more a part of our club. Okay, he can be a part of our club again. I'm sorry. Uh, on the, right underneath. On the yearbook. And uh, that's how that happened. Um, I do love when they say, well, we'll deal with Machine Smith when he shows up again. If he shows up again. It's like, do you think he's gone forever? It's like, well, I wouldn't count it out. But, because uh, in truth, yeah, that's Machine Smith for you. Um, no one's ever really dead in a Marvel universe. Okay. And uh, did you, did you, did you read, uh, the 454? Not this time, but I have read it before. I think I remember yeah, I mean, enough of it. Nice story. Yeah. There's a whole thing about this is a cap coming back to find Sharon again. Mm-hmm. Not going to leave her behind the lines this time. She's in a little town or a little country that's, you know, obviously run by a dictator. Um, although it's not run by a dictator, it's run by a super brilliant cyber hacker from Georgetown University, man. <laughs> Just giving you that little little hint that yeah, man, you, they go over to their country and they come to our country to learn all the secrets, and they go back to their country to take over and be evil, evil, <laughs> Phil. Uh, anyway, that's the plot line. Um, they have a little Yankee town area where they just have all that Yankee decadence, you know, because that's what the real ruler likes is that little small area where you can have that. Decadence and have your McDonald's and, uh, you know, they go to the prison camp where um, uh, Sharon was held and she's, I'm not quite sure what she wants. She wants to go back to the prison cell, which doesn't make any sense. But then Cap just breaks everyone out of prison. 
She's like, these people aren't ready for a march. It's like, well, they're going to do it. And yada, yada, yada. They do it. And they get away. And yada, 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 yada. The day is saved. So, yay. That was good. Um, so, you want to talk any other comics this week? Um, Yeah, I mean, there were some new ones. Did you, did you, did you, get, ah, did you get a chance to read Captain America, Symbol of uh, Truth? Yes, I do. Yes, I did. And, of course, one thing I will say is, you know, uh, you know, He's not Sam Wilson anymore. He's Captain America, and he can do this all day. <laughs> um, he is fighting. Um, he is fighting T'Challa. T'Challa, which is fun. It's good, and actually, I love the fact that he's holding his own against T'Challa, as they have a real nice political debate. You know, about power, responsibility, and yada yada yada. You know. Um, this is part of the larger White Wolf saga, but the idea is is that there are these terrorists who were planning an attack on uh, on um, uh, Wakanda, um, and after Sam beats up Crossbones, who was the terrorist, uh, we see that um, you know he has to deal with uh, the Dormalage and the current prime minister. Who then goes on, and I, I, and again, this is this overly onerous action where she bans not only any new <coughs> immigrants from the U.S., but all current immigrants and those who have been granted Wakandan citizenship. Yeah. It's like, you know, dude, that is cold. Yeah, I mean, it's a little over the top, but like here and even in the Black Panther book, I think like that new government is so intent on showing oh you know we can run our country without the, you know t'challa or a king and you know we can't look weak in front of the rest of the world now that we're you know almost like a democracy and not a monarchy and stuff yeah and that's fair but also yeah oh yeah i agree it's cold you know, but yeah that's that's their um we get, i like the actual the backup kind of uh lines with uh with um falcon yeah and, uh the girl that he rescued, and I'm not sure, and that's the interesting thing, it's like, the pebble in her shoe, is that vibranium? Is there another horde of vibranium in the American Southwest into South America? Which, for what it's worth, is sort of hinted at in the new Black Panther film coming out, that the Atlanteans have vibranium as well, so. That's interesting, we do get to catch up with the White Wolf, here and he is not happy the terrorist plots are not occurring so because you see because he breaks the glass in his hand the classic symbol of someone who's not happy and that was captain america i enjoyed it phil how about you oh i i really yeah i've been enjoying this series i've been enjoying both captain america series yeah i mean i don't know how many books you want to talk i mean i got a defenders i've got what's this book which book this is? It's got America. Oh, this is. Oh, that's the Thunderbolts. We just talked it. Did you? Uh, did you get to read Ant Man? Uh, no, I did not read Ant Man. Tell me about Ant Man. Ah, uh, well, again, I mean, we're doing our whole time travel thing this time. Uh, you get Scott Lang and uh, Cassie Lang, and uh, we get the whole thing with uh, which Cassie Lang Stinger or um, Stinger Stinger? Richard. Yeah, Stinger. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I think yeah, most. Yeah, I think this is this the present, but they're dealing with uh, like the Hank Pym Ultron. I'm like, is he still Ultron at this point in the present? Oh, but when Hank Pym was Ultron, yeah, was yeah, yeah, because they were dealing with that whole thing. Yeah, I mean, not currently, but it was a thing that existed not too long. ago. Oh yeah, yeah, but I swear, yeah, I thought it's he... a variation on the Ant Man. It's a variation on the Ant Man hypothesis. Yeah. But I thought they were doing a, a whole future th or a whole present day thing, but uh, yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, it's present day enough. It depends on where in the present you are. Mm hmm. So yeah, because uh, Tony Stark and Thor were trying to decide, you know, what they should do. They were gonna like try to where they could imprison the Hank Pym Ultron, and then this whole thing ensues where uh, Scott tries to steal steal him, and, and then Black Ant shows up and tries to free Hank Pym Ultron. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh God. Yeah, I forgot how this ended. Uh, because, yeah, there are more time travel because I guess they're going to meet up with the 
Hank Pym from the past, but uh, All Father Ultron. All Father Ultron. Oh my goodness. But no, I mean uh, this this theory, I I've been enjoying this series also. Uh, like I said, we got some present stuff. There's the you know Al Ewing still keeping up with the time travel stuff. Uh, oh, I told you I was reading some of that uh, that Avengers X Men Eternals crossover. And uh, I think it was the they did an Avengers issue for that, uh, just like a just like a one shot. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. Like this, the uh, you know, oh, the Avengers issue is good. You should read it because uh, yeah, it's yeah, I it, did with, with oh, uh, no, 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 no. There's just like a, it's a uh, it's like a uh, A X E. It, it's just like an Avengers one shot issue. You know, number one, I just put it in the thing. But uh, no, it's when the Celestials like judging Tony Stark. And like using it like his father to like judge him and stuff, and uh, I think it was that issue. But they, you know, they were in his head like, you know, if you hadn't given up that uh, godlike uh, Korvac power a little bit ago, you could have solved this whole mess. You know, if you just could have held out a couple, some I think it was some of the Avengers in his hallucination. They're like, you know, if you could just could have held on to that power a few weeks longer, you could have just snapped your fingers and cleared the Celestials off this whole thing, and no one would have to worry about anything. Well, that's an assumption. Yeah, yeah, but I think it was just the Celestials just, like, in his head trying to judge how he reacted to that. Yeah, but, you know, I think, and that's, I mean, I mean, and that is, of course, the whole thing. When Hawkeye faces, you know, the Celestial, he's like, you know, why do you think I care what you think? If you're going to destroy us, you're going to destroy us, and that's fine. It sucks, but, you know, I'm not going to try and shoot an arrow at you because... I'm well aware that's probably not going to accomplish much. But more to the point, it's like I help people and you can make your own decisions on what I do or what I don't do. And I'm just going to live my life to, for me to be a good human being. And like, and I think, you know, and I think some people said that, that this is where Hawkeye saves the, saves the planet in a very real way. Because he like basically calls the celestials out for who the heck are you to judge? You know, it's like, well, we are, the, it's like, yeah, okay, I know, you have more power than I do. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. You know, same reason why when I'm in Latveria, I'd be very nice to Dr. Doom, because quite frankly, I know he can have me killed until I can get out from out, out from under him. You know, that you have more power doesn't make you more powerful. Um, or make you more morally right. Yeah, and again, it's just Hawkeye. It's like, who am I? I'm just a guy with a bow and arrow. I'm just trying to do my best, you know. Yeah. And that's why I really like that issue. But, yeah, I mean, any of them, you know, I, I get the feeling that the a, the AXEs, it's a lot of moral uh, quandary stuff. But at the end of the day, you know, it comes down to, like, who really are the Celestials to make these decisions? Yeah, exactly. You know, what is their greater measure? You know, and, you know, not for nothing, they've done greater measure kind of discussions where they've Look, I mean, you know, the Watchers have done that many times. They say, well, no, if you just look in this alternate universe, here's what happened when you did do that. So maybe it's it's a, it's okay that that happened, you know. Don't worry so much about, you know, Uncle Ben dying, uh, Pete, because, you know, <laughs> otherwise you might have become a real jerk and a game show host. So, <laughs> you know, things are things can be different. Hey, speaking of uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, oh. I'm sure you read Damage Control. Yes. This is, and, you know, I don't know, man, sort of a, 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 a busted clock is wrong twice a day. I do wonder if there's a flirk and lose at uh, Damage Control HQ, that that's going to come back. But we see, and again, now, I, it's been a month, I don't even remember why they're trying to find this guy a job. I don't know if they ever said who he was, but yeah, it, it wasn't the first issue it started with him, like, basically just showing up for the first day, and they're like, oh, well, we'll try to fit you in here, here. Yeah, well, this is Gus, and man, now that makes me wonder, like, like who is Gus? To the long boxes, Phil. You know, is he, is he secretly Gus? Like, see, I think Gus, now I immediately think Gus Gorman, but that's DC. Gus Fring from Breaking Bad? I don't know who Gus from Breaking Bad is, but maybe Phil does. John Car Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, okay. No, this is yeah. That, that, that's not him, no. But yeah, that's who that is in Breaking Bad. Yes. But yes, but this is this is a different Gus, and uh, so he gets put in in complaints department and waves everyone through because he believes everyone's story 
at face value, which is like, it is one of these things where like part of you wonders, is this like, is this an undeveloped cosmic cube that has gained sentience? Well, I always wonder, you know, I, I don't know, I always wonder if like maybe they're trying to set it up where, oh yeah, it's got something, but this guy, uh, what's the, the, uh, is that a redheaded guy? The, the redheaded guy who like always like takes him from job to job. Is that like Loki or something secretly in the skies, just trying to like, you know, I guess cause he's chaos or something? One of the he's one of the original interns from the original uh, Damage Control series. Mm. Although he could be just someone taking that form. Although I do like the idea of oh Bart or whatever. Yeah, you know the 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 Red Beetle and Ant Man Scott Pym Ant Man fighting. Uh, in some some beachfront city, and then Hank Pym accidentally shrinks this guy's family. Oh, Scott! Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Scott. Scott Lang accidentally shrinks this guy's family. But then it's like, no, that was all over the news, and yada yada yada. And then they call in, and again, you would think there'd be a better channel for this situation. Like that. That seems like the kind of thing that you would triage almost immediately. Rather yeah. than making them go through the bureaucratic loops. And we do meet um, a Glidget Man, who is a microversian who um, has helped uh, Scott and, and uh, Nadia in the past. And he's here to help again, so that's good. And they're going to get uh, Gus a job outdoors next week, so that should be fine. See, when we first met Gus, I kind of felt he was an Eddie Haskell-esque character. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like, well, there's got to be something more to him. You know, if you remember Eddie Haskell, where he would just say, yeah, I'm I'm the best guy for the job, and then he would just totally goof it off. But this guy, he seems like, oh, no, I'm the best guy for the job, but also I'm not, I have no filter or no understanding of what I'm doing. Did did you see the solicit for for next issue on the last page? Yeah, it's Thor versus a giant mutated catfish monster, it says. There you go. Um, Damn polluted. Maybe they're going to Japan and there's the giant catfish. Oh, please, that's polluted New York rivers. <laughs> ah, that could be it, too. All right, Philip. Um, do you want to talk any other books this week? Um, I mean, it's an Avengers book. I'll just say it real quick. Uh, Thor 27, of course. Yeah, Eddie Brock shows up. <laughs> Eddie Brock. The oh, King in Black. <laughs> Uh, you, you made him a Hulk, now we're going to make him a symbiote. Why well, no, but, well, it, the whole thing is, you know, Thor's sitting around moping, because uh, when he got Hulkified, he destroyed the uh, Rainbow Bridge, and... Again. Yeah, and, you know, so, Loki's like, you know what, we might be able to br- put this back together, it might take a while, but Loki's like, for now, maybe I could just open a portal we could walk through, and he opens up a portal, and then, uh... Oh, I let me get the name, this guy's name right. Uh, and who pops out, but uh, covered in a symbiote, it is... What is that? Dark Oth? Uh, Dark Oth, the Death Demon. Oh, my. Who Thor fought in Thor 325. I think he, I think he made an appearance in Fantastic Four, too, but... Oh, there we go. But yeah, he's covered in a symbiote, so then, yeah, who pops their brain into another symbiote to help? Yes, Eddie Brock, the King of Black. Oh, that's nice of him. So he shows up. Yep, but that's <sighs> but that's continued. So yes, they will get that next issue too. Okay. <laughs> All right, Philip. Let's call it a night because it's already uh, almost an hour. Yes, sir. Uh, Philip, you know what I like to tell people hmm. that if they like this show and they would like to talk about this show, they can always write to us at capesandlunatics at gmail dot com. That's capesandlunatics, all one word at gmail.com and of course they can always call us and leave us a voice message so we know what they think real in live time at 614-382-2737 that's 614-38capes and likewise if they would like to just give us money because we're so pretty they can do so at linktree l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash capes and lunatics where you can join our patreon to give us money find out about the worst superhero movies of all time Vote for them if you would like. Likewise, buy lots of merch. Like aluminium mugs that keep your cold drinks cold all night long. Or t-shirts, which I'm not wearing, but I usually do, that are emblazoned with the Capes and Lunatics logo. You can do all that at that location. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E 
slash capes and lunatics. And like Lilith always likes to say in all the show notes, there's just a cash app link if you just want to randomly throw cash at us. Yes, that's fine too. We like the money. All right, Philip. And then, of course, you know, if people would like to write to me in their old fashioned email way, the way our mothers and fathers once did, they can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word Again. at gmail.com. They can follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet things when I feel like it or when there's something new to do. At Charlie Esser, that's C H A R L I E E S S C R. It's the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! Thank you, Maz. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it has been another adventurous day. Learning the deepest, darkest secrets of those who keep us safe. Return again next week to listen to another Avengers Declassified. This episode will self-destruct in ten minutes. Oh, that's right. Next, remember, uh, we made that decision. Next week, kids, the first uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch miniseries, the four, the original four-issue miniseries. That'll be fun. Because mm. it's, it's October. It's Halloween. It's the spooky time. So it's going to be dressed like a witch. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in this country. Good night. <laughs>